Well guys, it's finally here. Mac OS Ventura has been in public beta for a really long time. It's been over a year since Monterey came out, but finally it's launched to the public. And today I wanna to tell you guys about some of my favorite little tips and tricks. But I'm not talking about like the big things like Stage Manager because you've already heard about Stage Manager and let's be honest, it kinda of sucks. So today we're gonna to talk about some of my favorite small little useful tips and tricks that make living with the Mac just a little bit easier. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let's get started. If I had to guess, probably a good number of you guys are excited to update, but you gotta delete a whole bunch of files to make enough room to actually download it. Well, fortunately, today's video sponsor, Clean My Mac X, is here to help. Clean My Mac X has been on the market for 13 years and has been downloaded more than 27 million times. It's simply the best tool for cleaning and optimizing your Mac. Scanning for junk files, removing unused applications, and keeping your Mac fast, safe, and protected are their number one priority. Clean My Mac's most popular feature, Smart Scan, lets you examine your system to find those wasted junk files or unused applications, while Space Lens lets you look at your disk allocation in detail, while at the same time, malware removal monitors for threats on your system. Plus, the new menu app gives you helpful recommendations by monitoring battery, memory, temperature, and consumption processes. All of these factors work together to give you a comprehensive understanding of what's on your system, what's going on with your system, and how to keep it running optimally. If you want to learn more about Clean My Mac, check out the link in the description below to get started today. And now let's get back to the video. Okay, so let's jump right in with one of my favorite features, which honestly, it's kind of hard to believe it took them this long, but finally there's a clock app on the Mac. Can I get a round of applause? It's been on iOS for 15 years, but now we finally have it on the Mac as well. And honestly, things are pretty simple. You can set a stopwatch, a timer, and you can even create an alarm with a UI that is just different enough from iOS to not make it look like they literally just copy and pasted this entire application. That's all well and good, nothing particularly groundbreaking here, but the one thing I will say I do like about the new clock app is even if you close it, if you have a timer running, it's gonna stick around up at the top menu bar so that you'll always know how much time is left. So what's the verdict? Well, the clock app is extremely useful and obvious, but it's also extremely late. So I'm gonna give that feature a six out of 10. You lose one point for every three years late the feature is, so that's minus four points. Next up is system preferences. And this is another one that might seem obvious, but honestly, I've gotten used to it. It was controversial at first, because basically what Apple did here was just copy and paste the exact layout for the settings on your iPhone and iPad, and they just put it on the Mac. Now, as someone who's used the Mac for more than 10 years and has gotten used to all of the previous settings icons, well, it took a little bit of time to get used to and actually find everything, but I think you'll find that things are a lot easier to locate now because there's just more categories. There's even obvious things like a pane for game controller so you don't have to bury into somewhere and be like, hmm, was that in Bluetooth devices or was that somewhere else? So the verdict on the new system preferences, well, I think it's good, but again, it's about nine years late, so that's gonna get a seven out of 10 for me. But folks, you don't have to worry, because this next feature is not obvious or late. It's actually really cool. I'm talking about Spotlight, which now that I mention it, has been around for quite a while, but now it's getting really, really good. So first up, one of my favorite things that just improves quality of life dramatically is Quick Look in Spotlight. So now you can go through your results and hit the space bar and actually see what they are. You can load entire web pages this way and scroll through them. And then if you're like, oh wait, this isn't what I wanted, just hit the space bar and it goes away again. This, honestly, that's a great feature. Maybe it's a little late. I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10, but the really exciting one is that you can now use Spotlight Search for photos. And I'm not just talking about like, oh, let me look up img0483.jpg. No, I'm talking about like, you can search up concert and it'll show you results for photos taken at a concert. You can look up cars and look at that. It's finding cars 
in my photos as well as message attachments and other applications and displaying those results. Folks, that is actually really useful because sometimes I don't wanna scroll back through all of my photos to try and find them. You can just search for them. And guess what, folks? It works even better if there's text in your photos because it can search for that too. So for example, if I wanted to find my graduation photo, I can look up American and boom, there it is. It pulls out the American from the sign in my university and I've got my result in two seconds. That is not only useful, it's also very impressive and it's not late at all. So that one is gonna get a 10 out of 10 from me. Okay, so this next tip is well, I'm not sure how useful it is, but if you go into accessibility and you go down to audio, you now have a couple of options that you didn't have before, namely background sounds. That's an interesting one. Let's go ahead and turn the volume up here. And if you turn it on, it plays background sounds. If you click choose, we can, we can choose between balance noise bright noise, dark noise, ocean, rain, and stream. I have to go to the bathroom now. So that's interesting. Anyway, Apple says that those are to mask unwanted environmental noise to help you stay focused and calm. So I could definitely see some people using that. Although let's be honest, most people probably just look this up on YouTube. So next up, we gotta talk about one that you've probably heard about, continuity camera. But one thing that you might not know is that this isn't just for Zoom calls or FaceTime conversations. If you launch QuickTime Player, you can actually do a movie recording using the iPhone camera. So if I go down here and switch to the iPhone 14 Pro Max, look at that, there you guys are. And look at this, it automatically changes orientation based on how you hold the phone. So now you've got like a weird double Luke camera system, or we can zoom in, because it does keep the landscape orientation of this recording. Um, that's, that's a bit close there. So I could see this feature being extremely useful and just like a webcam, it doesn't just have to do video calls. It can also be nose cam. And so that's a feature that I think people will probably like. Nice work, I'm gonna give this one a nine out of 10. So next up, a feature I wanna talk about is dictation mode, period. This is a feature that has been in macOS for a while, but now it's a little bit more useful, period. You can see we have a new mode here, which allows you to spell things out letter by letter. So for example, L-U-K-E space M-I-A-N-I. It's a little bit work in progress in my experience. It doesn't get everything and for some reason it capitalized the I's in my name. I, I don't know why. So perhaps a feature that might be more useful than that somewhat hit or miss dictation mode is live captions. Now, this is still in beta mode, so it's a little hit or miss as I'm about to show you, but essentially what this does is live in real time dictate any audio that is on the screen. However, it does have a tendency to uh, break. Like the window where the live caption should be sometimes just disappears and is replaced with a blank gray rectangle and it's super buggy and uh, yeah, that's gonna need some work there, folks. Uh, even when it does work, I have to be honest, because it's doing it live, it's not as accurate as YouTube's built-in captions, so if you wanted to use it for that, the built-in is just a better option. Uh, I hope that Apple can get this working really well for FaceTime, because I think that would legitimately be useful, but as it is implemented right now, uh, I'm gonna give this one a five out of 10, because you lose one point for every bug, and it has like five bugs, so I think that's fair. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the dictation and live captions features. Let me know in the comments below. But one thing that I think is pretty universally useful is the new ability to customize Safari's suggested passwords. So typically in the past, 
it autofills a password, it generates one, and you either go with that or you make your own. But now you actually have a drop down menu, and by default, you can do it with no special characters, so it removes the hyphens, or you can edit it and it just lets you change whatever you want in that password. This, I think, is a very welcome feature because I like to use Safari's auto-generated passwords, but sometimes they don't have enough characters. Sometimes you can't have a special character. Sometimes they're too long, and then it was kind of pointless. But now you can actually customize them, and I think that's very useful. However, I would argue that that probably should have been in a couple of years ago, so we're gonna subtract two points for lateness and give that an eight out of 10. So those are some of the more interesting features that you might not have heard of in the new version of macOS Ventura. I'm honestly very interested to know which of these you think was your favorite, which is the most useful. For me personally, I gotta go with the spotlight image search. I think that is a really cool feature and definitely something that I could see myself using on a very consistent basis. Spotlight has you know, it was a great idea from the start, but it has been getting really, really good the past couple of updates, and I'm excited to see what Apple does with it next. But you know what I'm more excited to see will do next is you hitting the like and subscribe button. That was a really smooth transition anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.